Here we are back live, 13.40 a.m. We look at Zen and Mike Haywood. This is Love, Guns and Freedom. Just to let you know, guys, you can listen to any of our shows on the internet, in the archives. Go to the website, lovegunsfreedom.com. We have a special guest. I mean, this guy really, it's a guy that inspired me. A few years ago, when I saw a YouTube of him, there are a lot of things. He's a pastor, by the way. I don't want to call it this guy. He's a pastor. He has a church. And we will tell you right now more about himself. And uh, we bring to the shows, to the show here, people that we agree, people we don't agree. Sometimes I agree off, sometimes I don't agree. But there are a lot of things I agree with Pastor Anderson. I think he has a great spirit, the spirit of freedom, the spirit of Bill of Rights. There are some other items that I may disagree or I say I disagree. But that's going to be part of interesting uh, interchange we have here. So I really like Mr. Anderson, Pastor Anderson. Let me put them live. Pastor Anderson, how are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thank you, by the way. I really appreciate You know, you have no idea. When I watched your video a few years ago of the uh, electrifying moment, I called it, with, uh, <laughs> you know, with the, uh, who were, border patrollers, Homeland Security, who was exactly the gentleman uh, giving you that time? Yeah, the, the guy who uh, tasered me was with the Arizona DPS. The DPS, wow, even worse. Yep. Uh, no, even federal. We got our own state scumbags there. So please, uh -huh. let's, before we introduce you as a, from a spiritual point of view, let me introduce you as a point of an American that who understand his rights, who wanted to st stand for your rights, and you stood for your rights, so much that you got beaten up, tased, and also charged, and you still fought till the end, and you were found not guilty. Let's give a little bit of a refresher to the listeners exactly what happened and when happened the situation. Absolutely, yeah, I was just driving down the road, coming home from work, like I always do, uh, between Southern California and Arizona, and I was coming down the Interstate 8, and it was, you know, about 10.30 at night, and I got stopped at one of these border patrol checkpoints, but they're not on the border. They're like 75 miles from the border, and I was traveling from west to east. I had not even crossed the border, and they stopped me at this thing, and they wanted to search my trunk because they said that the dog had alerted to them that there were either drugs or bodies in my trunk. Well, turned out later in the trial, it came out that the dog had never alerted. But that was their story. You know, they basically lied to me and said that the dog had alerted. I never saw the dog alert, so I asked them to bring the dog back out and show me, and they, they took the dog away and never brought it back. So we had a standoff for about an hour and 15 minutes where I was just refusing to let them enter my vehicle uh, without a warrant. So after an hour and 15 minutes, the Arizona DPS Highway Patrol shows up, and they said, you're under arrest. And I said, what am I under arrest for? They said, for failure to obey me right now. Wow. So that's what you see on that short video, the two minute video, he says, you know, for failure to obey me right now. And they basically told me if I don't come out of that car, they're gonna bust into my car. And I told them, I said, fine. If you're gonna violate my rights and break into my car, then go ahead and break in my car, but I'm not letting you do it. I'm not letting you into my car. So they acted like they were gonna bust out my passenger window. So I was just thinking, okay, fine, break my window, whatever. But what they actually did, they had another guy hiding at the back of my car, ready to break out my driver's side window right by my head. So they told me to cover my eyes so that I wouldn't get broken glass in my eyes. Really, it was because they didn't want me to see the guy coming at me from the left. Yeah. So they shattered both of my windows at the same time, shot me with a taser, which I also did not see that coming. They shot me with a taser, and I was electrified for 22 seconds straight, wow. which is a pretty long time, you know, if you count it off. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. Yeah, yeah. 22 seconds straight. But after I'd been electrified for a few moments, one of the Border Patrol thugs grabbed my head and slammed it into the little broken glass uh. mountain range that was left over from where they had busted out my window, and he just sort of ground my face into the broken glass, just ground it into that jagged edge. And there's pictures of it online where you can see the jagged glass just covered in my blood in the shape of my head. So he just basically just shoved my face in that broken glass. I could just feel that glass just cutting into my brow while I'm being electrified, 50,000 volts. Then they swung open the door, rolled me onto the ground, stepped on my head, electricity was still flowing. And finally, after 22 seconds, they shut off the taser 
and I hear them all yelling to me, get up, get up, get up. So then I, I you know, stagger up to my feet, and they put handcuffs on me, took me back to the Border Patrol trailer, and then when they put me in the trailer, they started mocking me and laughing to me, saying, oh, you thought you were going to win. Well, we won this time. And they're like, you thought you were going to put this on YouTube, but you're not going to put this on YouTube because we beat you this time. And the reason they say this time is because I've traveled through these checkpoints hundreds of times uh-huh. going to and from work on a weekly basis. And when I did so, you know, I would always just, when they would ask me questions, I would just not answer them because I was just exercising my Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights. But every other time, they just let me go. This is the first time that they just would not let it go. Yes. I, by the way, how can uh, let uh, a slave rise your head and then, you know, you start to spread this sort of, 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 of uh, freedom that we're supposed to have and other people may take the example from you and uh, that's very bad precedent. That's why I think they wanted to set an example with you because that cannot happen anymore in the new America. You know, Fourth Amendment, it's gone in their books. That's why I say, you know, I have a lot of respect for you because as a human being, as an American there, you knew exactly you were outnumbered, alone, and you stood by the principle that for me, you have right only if you're ready to stand for your rights, not because somebody writes somewhere that you have rights. You have rights only if you are not afraid to stand up. And that was the perfect example. Of course, you had some sort of a very hard times because you had to go to the hospital and more important, you were charged with a crime, right? Exactly, yeah, I went to the emergency room and they stitched up my head and then I was charged with failure to obey an officer. It's a felony. And I was also charged with obstructing the highway, wow. which is stupid because they're the ones who stopped me and told me I can't leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Question, uh, did you go, um, how ended up this criminal uh, charges? I mean, you went to, I know I ended up, but let's remind to the listener, you had to fight all the way, you didn't plead guilty, you fought all the way, right? Yeah, and here's what's funny. If I would have pled guilty, it probably would have been like a $400 fine. Yeah. But instead, I spent like ten grand on a lawyer in order to beat the thing. Yes. But, ba- but basically, in the end, we actually got a jury trial, which was kind of an act of God, because they don't even give you a jury trial anymore unless it's like a felony. Yes. And, and you know what? That's fault. That's wrong, because in the Bill of Rights, it says in the Sixth Amendment that all criminal charges to get a jury trial over in the Sixth Amendment. Over $20, correct, right? Yeah, well, that's the Seventh Amendment. Seventh, Seventh Amendment. Amendment says over $20 for civil disagreement. Yes. And then the Sixth Amendment says for all criminal trials, uh, a jury trial. Now, a lot of people will say this. Well, you can't just have a jury trial, trial for every little thing. But here's what I say to that, Luca. If yes. it's such a little thing, why are you even arresting me for it? Exactly, so exactly. <laughs> You're right. You know? By the way, I would like to put, you know, this video already, probably millions of people watch it, but for the new listeners or for people that maybe the first time heard about you, you got to watch this because this video looks like for me something I may have shot if I was going maybe to China in, uh, or North Korea or maybe, I don't know, Russia. Not anymore. I guess they're pretty much better off than us oh. right now. Anyway, so you got to watch this. I will applaud this video exactly on lovegunsfreedom.com in this today shows where there is also the photo of Pastor Anderson. So people need to understand what takes today to exercise your rights. It takes a lot of faith, I believe that, and also a lot of courage because we are in this dimension and we are still made of flesh and bones and hurts. To be taste 24 seconds or so, that's an experience that many people may have be dead. I mean, if you have a weak heart, you may kill you. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, taking the courage to defend yourself in front of a jury with judges and lawyers and, and money that you have to pay. I mean, not everybody can do that. That's why I say I give a lot of respect to Pastor Anderson, first of all, as an American, to stand for the Bill of Rights. And this is exactly what we need to do more of us. Uh, Mike has a question. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Did you say uh, this was right on the border? Was this a few miles in inside the border? Did this happen? This, this was actually 75 miles from the border, so it was not it was not at the border at all, 75 miles away. Well, where does the border patrols, um, did, are they allowed to do that, that far in, or is that in, in their... Well, they, they are actually allowed to patrol anywhere in the United States. I used to live in Sacramento, California, and the border patrol would drive around in Sacramento, California, but, which is nowhere near the border, but as far as setting up a checkpoint like this, they can do it anywhere within 100 miles of the border. So because they were 75 miles, 
you know, they're within that hundred. Right. And they're called Constitution Free Zone. I'm being sarcastic here. They create this sort a hundred miles from the borders. You are pretty much in nobody's land. This is not America anymore. You are in this sort of a new Constitution Free Zone that they can pretty much avoid every type of Bill of Rights. I mean, they can say, get up of your car and we have an excuse. Or problem. They have their own reason now. You must comply. Otherwise, you're going to be tased. And, and, and you know that people might not know this, but a majority of Americans live within that uh, Constitution free zone. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right because it includes along the oceans as well. Yeah, exactly. So, pretty much, uh, the, most of our population lives, uh, you know, on the East Coast in that zone or West along Coast. the southern border, California. Yep, you're right. So that's my point, guys. You know, this is another proof that the land of the free, home of the brave, unfortunately, is way gone unless we take it back. And uh, we're becoming pretty much the land of the fee, home of the slaves. I'm telling you, because everything is a fee. Everything is pretty much is uh, under color of law, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about you as a pastor. This is the, the first time I, I found about you. It wasn't about you as the American standing for your rights. Now, let's talk about you as, as, a, as a person that... Uh, spiritual person that also your job your mission in this life is to spread the the, the, the word of the Lord uh, tell me exactly how you started your 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 mission in, in in being a pastor when when did you start to do this well I started pastoring eight and a half years ago but I've actually been a Christian you know since I was six years old and I grew up reading the Bible serving the Lord and I just I've been pastoring now for eight and a half years and, you know, my, my main mission about that is, you know, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, he was buried, he rose again. And the Bible asks a question. This is another, this actually is another viral Border Patrol video I have, is the one where I try to give the gospel unto the border guard, and he basically, he just wants me out of there. Wow. So somebody... Somebody uploaded a video to YouTube called The Fastest Way to Get Through a Checkpoint. Uh -huh. And it shows me pull out my Bible and try to give him the gospel. And he's just like, all right, see you later. Have a good one. Oh, good idea. But, anyway, I saw that. <laughs> but I asked him the question, you know, the, the, the question that's asked in the Bible, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So according to the Bible... To be saved, we have to believe on Jesus Christ. It's not based on how good we are because we're all sinners. You know, the Bible says, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. So none of us is good enough to go to heaven. It's just it's through grace, you know, that Jesus Christ has died for us. And if we believe on him, we'll be saved. Okay. But other than that, you know, I've been, that's, that's the main message of, of the Word of God and the Bible. But here's the thing. The Bible also talks a lot about issues of freedom and issues of government. And unfortunately, most Christians today ignore the Bible's teachings on government and on freedom, and instead they just kind of go with like a Republican Party type of a, a teaching on government. Okay. Whereas I believe that the Bible, you know, has everything that we need about all subjects, including, you know, government, freedom, political issues as well. Okay. So I, I preach on these type of things as well. And... One of the first things I'd like to point to is that in Ephesians chapter 6 it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. So right, right there in the New Testament it tells us that we are in a spiritual battle against the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. And when you look at the people that are running the U.S. government today, I believe that that verse applies to them. I completely believe that because at the end of the day, you know, even we are in this uh, physical dimension, you know, we are made of flesh and bones. I, this is something that happened to me the last few years. Before, I was just looking at the material things. You know, say, okay, this is good, there is evil, there is that laws, there is my freedom, there is my rights. No, this is about the final goal is to pretty much uh, conquer your soul. I believe that now, even just because we are in this physical dimension, we are fighting also, more important, a spiritual battle. This is my personal interpretation. Sometimes in life, we've been given the chance to say or do something, regardless the odds of winning that uh, battle or that situation. But we have to decide, we need to decide, are you going to be with the good or siding with the evil? We have that choice. And sometimes even just being silent happens that you say, okay, I'm just saying, minding my business. If you're silent, it means you consent. 
And for exactly. example, uh, sometimes, you know, there is uh, things that happen in this world and they think they may be bigger than us. For example, okay, there is uh, these illegal wars that they are, not even wars, they are United Nations International Police Force, like uh, the Iraq uh, conflict, <laughs> that uh, millions of uh, innocent kids, people don't want to talk about it, but they've been killed. I mean, if civilians, okay? Uh, I want to, I need to speak up about it because the moment that I've been silent in that room when everybody's pretty much cheering them up, <laughs> And if I don't say something, I believe that I've been guilty too. And that's with many other things. If I talk about, for example, 50 millions of unborn children, they were killed without even having the chance to defend themselves in the wombs of their mothers the last 50 years or so. And if I don't speak up against that, I feel that somehow I am giving my soul a way to be complacent to that type of, uh, for me, sin. That's the way I look at that. What do you think about this? Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And, you know, when I was growing up, my mom always taught me silence is agreement. You know, when somebody says something and you're silent, you're agreeing with what they're saying. Exactly. And if, if we look at the Bible, there are rulers of the darkness of this world. Yet many Christians will call you a conspiracy theorist if you point that out. Yes. But yet in Scripture, we see that in the book of Daniel, it talks about, you know, demonic forces running the, the, the country of Persia. And it talks about in Isaiah chapter 14 that Satan was, was running the kingdom of Tyre and Zidon in the Old Testament. And so I believe that the men that are put in power today over a lot of our governments are actually under control of the devil. And they are bringing about his plan for a new world order, which has been prophesied in the Bible when the Bible clearly says in Revelation that someday there will be a one world government and that there will be a one world religion and that there will be a cashless society where people, instead of paying with cash, they will have to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. And it's going to be in their right hand or in their forehead. And the Bible says no man will be able to buy or sell without this mark. Now, you know, a thousand years ago when the Bible was first penned down, people were probably wondering how that could even be implemented. Because people could always just use coins or cash. But what it is is that they're, they're getting rid of the coins, they're getting rid of the cash, and it's going to be a thing where you have to use some kind of an electronic option to pay using your right hand or your forehead. And the Bible predicted this thousands of years ago. Exactly. We are living exactly in the, in the very interesting spiritual times. I believe really that even if, uh, if somebody is not religious, does not believe, not even religious, does not have faith, because I don't think even religious is the right thing. Uh, you must, faith is different from religion from my point of view. <laughs> the point is evidence. If you read this book called the Old Testament and New Testament, Bible, regardless of your religious belief, you will see that there are a lot of things that scientifically is proven that they are happening. And at that point... You know, I'm not here to preach, but all I can say is this. It's, all, it's not just uh, uh, another uh, bad man or powerful people that wants to take your money or want to take your liberty. I believe this is the end of the day. They want to take your soul. But my point is another one. Now, let's look a little bit about, uh, first of all, our government is being used in churches for uh, controlling us. Not just today. This is pretty much uh, happened since ever. This is coming from a former, I'm a reformer Catholic. You know, I, I used to be... When I was born in Rome, you, you become automatically Catholic. And uh, when I grew up, I was even 10 or 11, I never liked the idea to bow down in front of any man. Call me crazy, but I don't believe in theocracy. I do not believe that another man is, uh, has uh, the power that I'm supposed to submit and kiss his ring. It's wrong, in my opinion. And top men, uh, they are not God, okay? They're just human beings. So I refuse to be a Catholic. I came to America, and I started to find my own new spirituality in Jesus Christ without middlemen. That's the way I look at this. But I realized that there are many churches, especially lately in America, they're pretty much 501c, correct me if I'm wrong, and pretty much they are under the control also Homeland Security. <coughs> what is that? A duck call. Oh, a duck. <laughs> where are you? Uh, Pastor Anderson, where are you? I, I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> They would never heard that noise before. Anyway, so tell me a little bit. What do you know about this uh, government plan from uh, Homeland Security? There were letters sent to all the different pastors. They pretty much work with the government, try to apply Romans 13 to control the, the, the flock, okay, in case of an emergency. Did you ever heard anything about it? Absolutely have I heard about it. And not only that, but I can verify that it's true mm -hmm. because I actually, when that first started happening, I was going to a Baptist church at the time. 
that was a big Baptist church, okay? It had thousands of people in it. And at that time, our pastor was called to go to Washington, D.C., and he was all excited. He's going to go meet the president. And he went there with a whole bunch of other Christian pastors from all over America, and, and mainly the ones from the biggest churches, you know, because they want to influence the most people. Mm-hmm. And they were called into a meeting with George W. Bush himself. Wow. And, and they were told what they needed to preach and, and how they needed to go easier on the homosexuals and how they need to they need to back up, you know, what George Bush is trying to do in his administration. And he told them, I'm a born-again Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ, you know, but i got to play politics. you guys got to support me. you guys got to help me out with this. And, and these guys were so starstruck that, ooh, they get to go meet the president, that our pastor came back from that meeting and was praising Bush and saying, oh, I looked into my, his eyes, and he's a Christian. He's a godly man. And you know what? Bush was just as evil and satanic as Obama. Yes. But these pastors were deceived by Bush into thinking that he's Christian when he's not Christian whatsoever. And the, the funny thing is that, you know, Obama getting elected was almost one of the best things to ever happen to America because at least people are waking up. Because, you know, when Bush was in office, he did all the same things as Obama, and the Christians were just asleep at the wheel. I agree. But at least now that Obama's in office, at least people are waking up. Yes, I agree. I remind yeah. all the fellow Republicans that they are freaking out about the National Defense Authorization Act or some other executive, uh, the, 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 you know, tyrannical powers that this president is doing. Let's not forget about the Patriot Act. Let's not forget about other bills that Bush passed and or just executive order. This is just a continuation of the same plan. And, yeah, I would like to say, you know, Mr. Reborn Christian, I would like to ask to Mr. Bush, President Bush, how can a Christian go to uh, the Bohemian Grove and bow down? in front of, I don't know, many 50 feet owl, uh, Mr. Mo- I mean, God Moloch, and uh, worship yep. uh, this freaking uh, uh, idol, how can a Christian can do that? And when only the other Christian would see that this is not a conspiracy, there are videos out there, few, but there are evidence and proven. The last 50 years, presidents, they've been going there, most of them, and worshiping this uh, human sacrifice, the mock of a human sacrifice. I wouldn't give even the key of uh, my uh, used car to drive around the block to a man like that, that he worships uh, these, uh, these idols called Moloch. That, by the way, it's, it's an entity, it's a devil, it's, it's, it's a d- d- demonic entity. So, no, we have a serious problem. People need to wake up, they need to stop thinking about between phony left, phony right, Republicans or Democrats. Unfortunately, the top level, it's all control. The last thing we have, in my opinion, is each other and God, if you believe in God. And uh, talking about God, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, your church. You have um, Faithful Word Baptist Church. That's the name of your church? Exactly. Yeah, our church is Faithful Word Baptist Church. I started it from scratch in my living room. I was sent out by an independent Baptist church to start a church in Phoenix. Okay. I started in my living room eight and a half years ago. Now now we have about 125 people come on Sunday mornings. Okay. And we have about, you know, 70, 80, 90 people on the Sunday night and Wednesday night services. And, uh, you know, I preach the whole Bible. I don't just preach a political message. That's a very small part of my message because mm-hmm. I preach the entire Bible. Yes. But I never shy away from political subjects because they are covered in the Bible. So it's definitely, uh, you know, it's, I'm not one of those pastors where all I talk about is politics and freedom and liberty. But I talk about it as much as the Bible talks about it. And I'm not afraid to talk about it. And I preach sermons directly calling out Bush, directly calling out Obama, and preaching what the Bible says our government should be like. Okay, perfect. I like to go into some details because I like very much, okay. you know, things that, first of all, you can help us out to understand from your point of view. For example, Romans 13, we know that was one of the best part of the Bible, the New Testament, used by people like uh, Adolf Hitler, or at least a tyrant that would like to use religion to control the people. Uh, there have been different books written about Romans 13, the interpretation. Can you please tell your version of what is your interpretation of Romans 13? That, in your opinion, this is not something supposed to be used by government because if anybody says, okay, we must follow our government because Romans 13 says so, uh, you should follow also Hitler. You should have followed also Mao Zedong or every other tyrant out there. What is your interpretation of Romans 13 for the fellow Christians? Well, well here, here's the thing about Romans 13. They're, they're missing the whole point of Romans 13. 
Because in Romans 13, the Bible actually gives us a very clear definition of the purpose of government and why God has even ordained human government. And it says that government is for the punishment of evildoers. Okay? Now, an evildoer, the word evil in the Bible, we think evil just means bad, but evil actually means to harm another person in the Bible. That's what evil means. So basically, when God said in Romans 13 that he set up government for the punishment of evildoers, he's saying he's punishing those that harm other people. And, and that would be things like, you know, theft, murder, adultery, just basically things where you're, you're violating somebody else's person or property, you know, you're assaulting somebody or stealing from them or whatever. Okay, that's the purpose of human government. God did not set up human government to rule over every area of our lives. God did not set up human government in order to rule over the church. He did not set it up to rule over what goes on in my home. He set it up basically to punish criminals that would hurt other people and harm other people. But now we have all these crimes that are victimless crimes. You know, it, it has nothing to do with punishing evildoers. It's just they're just telling us what to do. Exactly. Or, or, or putting us in prison because we did not, you know, pay taxes or we did not, you know, or, or somebody smoked pot or whatever. And now, I'm, I'm against smoking pot. I, I believe it is a sin to smoke pot. You know, the Bible does command us to be sober. The Bible talks about drunkenness. And, I, you know, I feel that drugs are, are a similar thing that God will want us to stay away from. But here's the thing. I believe that all drugs should be legal because that's not the purpose of government. You know, government has a specific purpose ordained by God in Romans 13, and it does not include, you know, regulating plants. It just doesn't make any sense. No, I understand. Now, But question, When it comes to how they twist it, mm -hmm. the Bible is telling us that we need to respect the powers that be. We need to respect the higher powers. And, you know, children are supposed to respect their parents and obey them. We're supposed to respect human government that punishes evildoers and so forth. But it, it's not saying obey everything the government tells you to do no matter what. Exactly. And then, I, you know, I'm not a scholar like you. I'm just trying to learn and... Uh Uh, I tried to almost, you know, study from scratch because whenever I was born in Italy and grew up in Italy, are you in a chicken coop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have chickens in my backyard. <laughs> Very good. That's so fun. I like the sound effects. Great. What I, for example, I remember, you know, Paul, at the end of the day, he was beaten, he was put in prison. He was, of course, at the end, his head was chopped. If it was so much of a government kiss butt, okay, I mean, if it was such a compliance to a complete government, it would have happened that to him. The guy who was completely the opposite of what they're trying to make it look. The guy who was uh, denouncing oppressive government, I mean, he was there, he put his line, his body on the line. He was beaten, imprisoned. If it was such a government complete uh, serf, like they're trying to make it look like Romans 13, you must obey the government to the government. I mean, that wasn't Paul. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're right. In fact, all of the apostles were always getting beaten and thrown in jail by, by government officials all throughout the book of Acts. Exactly. So, you know, the whole story of Acts is, is one prison story after another of people getting arrested and beaten. But you don't see pastors today getting arrested. Well, beside you. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, you know, they don't get persecuted because they want to go with the flow. They don't want to speak out. Exactly. But in the Bible, people spoke out and they did get arrested and so forth. But, man, I just wish that people would read the Bible because it, it, it gives a layout of a very limited government. Okay. And if you think about it, the Bible is not really that big of a book. I mean, you can hold it in your hand, right? Yes. But the law books of the United States of America would fill an entire library. Yes. Even just one law, Obamacare itself, is longer than the Bible. Yes. Just I... Obamacare is more pages than my Bible has pages. Oh, you need a But yet, to load it up. people, that's one law, and they have millions of laws, you know, the state laws, the local laws, the city laws. The, 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 you know, now the global laws, but you got the, the national laws. And people think that God has too many rules, but yet God has a lot less rules than, than our government. Yes, Michael wants to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, um, Pastor, yeah, you, have you heard of uh, FEMA recruiting pastors to um, prepare their flocks for martial law? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and, and don't tell me it's a conspiracy theory because... Like I said, my pastor 10 years ago was called in to meet with Bush. Letters have gone out. I've seen the letters that went out 
for the clergy response teams for FEMA, it's mm -hmm. real. Yes, it is real. And people, all, real. all you have to do, listeners, listen, this is all factual things. Go online. You can Google it. And you can find, by the way, mainstream network news talking about it. And you can see the hard copy letters out there. This is on the open right now. You know, this is not anymore uh, the, the time that uh, people want to make fun about conspiracy. Unfortunately, we are very close to very interesting times. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Anderson, we are here live with him on 1340 AM on the love, love, guns, and freedom. People say, well, you know, this is love and guns and freedom, but what it really has to do with religion? First of all, we're not just talking about religion. Uh, I believe that, by the way, that uh, part of freedom is to be able to express our own uh, First Amendment, and amongst that also religion. So that's the point, you know? Because I have a lot of listeners that uh, they are agnostic or they don't believe, and that's their choice. I'm not here to preach you, but I tell you something. That's part of freedom, to be able to express ourselves now there's sound effects here. What's going on in the back? Are you, are you chopping uh, wood? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Sorry anyway, that. so that's okay. But that's my point. Uh, it's interesting uh, background. Pastor, I would like to ask you about one thing now. First of all, the New World Order, the global government. What do you think the role of the Pope, especially the latest Pope uh, you know, that we have here, I mean, they have there in Rome, that in my opinion is uh, more than what he's supposed to do, is uh, trans transpassing the physical and economic point that he's supposed to just take care about the soul, and instead he's coming to economics, he's coming down to redistribution of wealth, and he's coming down to this, uh, my opinion, of almost uh, global religion. What is your opinion about this new pope that uh, it's out there? Yeah, you're absolutely right. But see, the, the Catholic Church historically has always been about political power. Mm -hmm. Because if you look through the Dark Ages, they were ruling over the kings of the European countries, and they were exercising a lot of political power. Instead of doing what they should do is just deal with religion, they were actually uh, more in it for the money and the power, and they still have a lot of money and power. And you, you, you nailed it earlier when you talked about not bowing down to a man. The Bible commands us not to bow down to worship any man. Mm -hmm. And any time in the Bible somebody bowed down to, to Jesus' disciples, they always picked him up off the ground and said, do not worship us. Exactly. But yet the Pope allows people to bow down to him. And the role that the Catholic Church and the, the Pope is going to play is that, is that basically he has a billion followers and when the Antichrist comes, as the Bible says, he will point his followers to the Antichrist. Even the word Catholic means universal. And so this universal one-world religion that's coming, this one-world church, you know, Catholicism is going to be a big part of that. And it used to be that Catholics were not considered Christians by most Protestants or Baptists or Evangelicals, mm -hmm. but now... If you go to an evangelical Christian bookstore, they sell Catholic paraphernalia. They sell pictures of the Pope. So we're starting to see a uniting of all religions in preparation for this one world religion that's coming. So that's another prophecy yes. that people fulfill. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, I respect everybody till they don't infringe on my rights. You know, honestly, I'm not here to tell people what to do, or what to say, or what to believe. The only thing I always say... Whatever you believe, I, I'm okay until you don't have in your belief something that is going to infringe in my rights. Because, for example, if I want to go specific, okay, when the people call the religion of peace, okay, they're talking about the, um, Mr. Bush used to call the religion of peace, and if you read the book of the religion of peace, they, if you don't agree with them, they chop your head, as simple as that, or you have to pay a DMA, a tax. Uh, I have a problem with that, because there is a conflict with our Constitution, Bill of Rights, with some sort of religions. If anybody else uh, uh, wants to do whatever they want to do, it's fine. All I care is that they respect other people's rights. That's, for me, the generic law from a point of, uh, no, even a religious point, just from a point of, 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 of American person that uh, I want to live in peace res with have, uh, respect for myself and other people's rights. Now, talking about a little bit of, I have uh, some interesting topic that uh, I think... Uh, People may love to hear more. It's about uh, this documentary that I watched, and I was so pleased to find about that. It was about a pretty pre-trib myth, or this sort of a different, uh, you know, churches that believe in the pre-tribulation, after-tribulation, whatever. 
and I see there is a documentary that I was able to watch uh, I really enjoyed I support all to this type of information because I think it's so important it's called after the tribulation directed by my friend Paul Wittenberger and you are pretty much the main uh, one of the main voices there can we please briefly give in a little bit of a, an understanding to the listeners what's going on with this pre-trib uh, movement and why you think in your opinion this is a fraud absolutely historically Christians have always believed that in the end times there's going to be a period called the tribulation where Christians are going to be persecuted the Antichrist is going to rule over a one world government and there's going to be the mark of the beast but in the 1800s this fraud was developed called the pre-tribulation rapture that basically teaches that we are going to be taken out of this world through the rapture before you know any of the bad stuff really happens so we're going to be just going along our peaceful happy lives and then boom we're taken out of here before all hell breaks loose and this pre-tribulation rapture is believed by probably 90 some percent of evangelical christians and what it does is it, it, it teaches them hey don't worry about these geopolitical events don't worry about the fact that we're losing our freedoms don't worry about the fact that satan has taken over our government because hey before the persecution comes we're going to be gone anyway we're going up in the rapture now let me say this, the rapture is a biblical teaching found in 1 Thessalonians 4, but the Bible is crystal clear that the rapture takes place after the tribulation, after her, the Antichrist has issued the mark of the beast and all that. The so Christians are not prepared for what's coming. The, the documentary after the tribulation just destroys the pre-trib rapture. It's filled with Bible verses, it's filled with information, and... and I, I can't see how anybody could watch it and still believe in the pre-trib rapture. In fact, there's a movie that really promotes the pre-trib rapture, pre-tribulation rapture. It's called Left Behind. Yes. And it, it was like a B movie that was put out in the Christian community, but now they're making a Hollywood version that comes out this October with Nicolas Cage wow. is starring in this new Left Behind movie. And this movie will indoctrinate the masses with the pre-tribulation rapture. Mm. Okay. That, that, hey, Christians, don't worry about it. We're all going to be gone. Don't worry. You know, don't worry about one world government. God's going to take us out of here before that. It's a lie. And base, and 90 some percent of Christians believe in this stuff, uh, of evangelicals and Baptists and, and so forth. So basically, our movie after the tribulation is more important than ever with this new Nicolas Cage film coming out. Yes. And uh, this week, we were in Los Angeles with Paul Wittenberger. And we actually recorded a Spanish version of After the Tribulation that's going to come out in a couple months. Excellent. To get, to get this out into the, uh, the Spanish-speaking world, 300, 330 million uh, native Spanish speakers to warn them about the New World Order. And that's going to come out in a couple months. Perfect. By the way, I would like to remind everybody, this video is so important, regardless that if you are Christian or not. Because the bottom line, they're trying to use religions and organize religion to dominate us and to try to keep us uh, some sort of a passive, okay? So, uh, if you have a chance, go to framingtheworld.com and you can see the, the video. It's uh, after the tribulation and there is also other interesting video like documentaries like New World Order, Bible versions, the book of Revelation. Uh, Pastor Anderson is in them, and also it's a great job of information. You can, of course, uh, verify you may agree or not. That's not the point. But I think there is a lot of truth, and we must do our own research because this is so important. It's not just about uh, your type of uh, domination on this planet. They want to pretty much take your soul. I believe that, regardless which religion you're in, okay? So go please to uh, framingtheworld.com. I also will put the link and uh, try to look at also on YouTube. You can find on YouTube uh, after the tribulation. Please check it out. Now, let's talk about things that, uh, you know, as I said, we don't need to agree on everything. And uh, I like you as a human being. I think you got courage. And I like also your interpretation of uh, many parts of the Bible. Uh, call me, maybe I may not be a perfect Christian, but I got a couple of things that I may not agree with you. Uh, let me tell you where I am here right now. First of all, this is something nice, interesting, little juicy. Controversial, I'm reading this news from uh, the Christian Post. Controversial Arizona pastors sparks anger by say, saying guys should be executed. Is that true, Pastor Anders? you think the gays should be executed, in your opinion? Absolutely, but that's simply what the Bible says. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Some people basically say that they're a Christian, 
but they don't necessarily believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Okay. So there are certain parts of the Bible that they're not going to agree with. But I, I agree with the whole Bible cover to cover, and that's what the Bible says. Okay. So... Uh Let's say that, uh, first of all, I, I, you know, thankfully, uh, my opinion is, of course, you know, we have uh, religion on one side and we are not like a theocracy, so we uh, still have a different type of standard. And maybe this is my opinion, maybe different from yours. Because in my opinion, I believe, you know, if the gay, let's say, is doing something immoral against uh, the Lord, uh, uh -huh. it's, it's not my job as a human being, okay, to judge. I left this to, ju to God because the point is when there are two people, adults, okay, Uh, over 18, consentient, there is no violence, there is no coercion. Uh, they, I don't want to, um, let's say, legislate on morality, okay? This is right. something that, if there was, of course, let's say, a violation of somebody else's rights, like uh, a minor, a, a kid, or somebody that was not able to understand, and a force was used, that's different. But two people that are over 18, and there is no violence, no coercion, I let, the, at that point, their morality judge us by God. Humans should be out to respect each other's rights. That's the way I look at this. And I'm glad, grateful that that's where the society we live right now. And I'm not saying that uh, we are not going through a moment of uh, morality that is pretty much destroying the fiber of this country. That's another problem. But I think, you know, that's your interpretation. I'm, I'm glad you're here and I like to be upfront with everybody. You know, I don't agree on this one, but that's good. That's your opinion. And that's why I like K-Talks because, you know, we have pretty much the opportunity to have everybody's opinion here. That's the point. So let's talk about something else. I enjoy another part, really, that... Well, is, is it all right if I just explain the rationale of, of why the Bible says that and why, I, Go ahead, why please. I agree with that? Go ahead, please. I, I love that. Because, because here's the thing. The, the way that you just explained it right now, yes. I totally see where you're coming from. Because, like I even mentioned earlier, hey, you know, I think drugs are sin, but I don't think the drugs should be illegal. Or, you know, mm -hmm. there, if, if all sins were illegal, we'd all go to jail every day because we're all sinners, right? You know? Yes. I mean, so I, I do agree that there should be a difference between, you know, morality, religion, and, and political government. But the reason why this law is in the Bible about homosexuals is because what you said about two consenting adults mm -hmm. who just love each other, yes. that's homosexuals, that doesn't exist. That is a myth of Hollywood and a myth of the television. Because if you even just go to the Center for Disease Control website, and yes. if you even just look at just scientific studies that have been done of the homosexual lifestyle, yes. they will tell you that monogamy does not exist amongst homosexuals, and that the average homosexual has had sex with over 500 partners. Okay. So TV will show you, hey, this is just two men who love each other, this is just two women who love each other, when in reality, according to the, 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 the facts, the science, they're having over 500 partners okay. each. I understand. But, only and, and not only that, but every single time the Bible talks about homosexuals, mm -hmm. they're always raping someone or molesting someone. And, and here's the thing, every homosexual I've ever known was a rapist and a pedophile. Okay, that's and, your... And, That's this your... is what is covered up by the media, is that part of the homosexual lifestyle mm -hmm. is molesting children, and gays, more than anything, they want to have sex with children. And okay. so that's why God said to execute these people, because these, they are violent people, and Romans 1 clearly teaches that homosexuals are violent people who will molest others and rape others. Okay, listen, I don't want to speak for others because I wish, I, if I was a gay, I would say probably my opinion, but I don't have that type of background, so I cannot speak right. for others. I would love maybe uh, somebody a gay can call in and give their own experience. As a person, That they don't have time. Yeah, we don't, I wish we, we need more time here for this topic. <laughs> But I say something, you know, I don't want to generalize on everybody because uh, maybe it's true that there's statistics, maybe what you say. But I also want to right. believe that, first of all, uh, forget about love. As a physical act of a physical uh, sexual activity that I understand may be against the principle of Christianity. But still, as a point, if there is no violence, there is no coercion, that's supposed to be no a crime for me. Maybe in the front of, of, of the of Lord could be something immoral. But in front of right. our laws, we should not be, we are not under the Taliban that we should be stoned just because somebody wants to have a sexual relationship with a man or a woman. That's my opinion. And I, I wish, of course, that uh, maybe some gay friends uh, would listen and uh, would call in uh, with respect. We can have an exchange of ideas here. That's what we're trying to do. But my point, you know, I'm glad that you explained your point of view. I, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm only thing I say for me, If somebody is over 18 and you are in your own 
place. You know, I don't want to. I don't care if you're man and woman. If you do in front of my face, I think it would be wrong. But if you do in your privacy, in the way that you nobody get offended, nobody get uh, infringed on other people's rights, they should be able to do pretty much whatever you want. And the Lord is going to be the final judge. That's my opinion. Well, now, that's true because here's the thing: if 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 they were doing it behind closed doors and nobody saw it or knew about it, then this wouldn't even be an issue. But the, the, where it becomes an issue is that they are cramming it down our throat. They are doing it publicly. And look, if, if I believed like you that there were homosexuals out there that are just two people that love each other and blah, 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 then you know what? I could totally see where you're coming from, but I just encourage the listeners to do their own research on the statistics, look at the science, look at the statistics, and then look at the Word of God. And, and you know, I believe that these people are, are, you know, demented, violent, sick perverts and that's why God said that they should be executed, not because he's trying to legislate morality, but because he's trying to protect us. Okay. Because, frankly, normal people are just attracted to women. All right. Normal men are attracted to women. Any guy who's lusting after another man is, is, uh, is a sick pervert. No. But I just encourage people to read the scripture for themselves yes. and yes. research. It's okay if people don't agree with me, but you know what? The facts are facts. You know, yeah, look okay. it up yourself. Next show, we're going to do a show all about gay homosexuality. <laughs> no, seriously, this is important. And I hope uh, gay listeners can call in. And well, they're, they're, they're too busy having sex with 500 people to call in. Not gonna yeah, exactly. I mean, they're not going to find time for a show like okay. this. And he was Pastor Anderson. We are live here on 1340 AM. Oh, yeah. And as you can see, we have uh, still a little bit of freedom of speech in this country. I'm pretty pleased about it. I want to thank the radio for this. And uh, now, let's talk. We're almost ready to wrap up here. You know, Pastor, I want to give you the chance to pretty much say a message, a uh, short message before we close. Yeah, my, you know, my message is this. I believe in freedom of religion. I, if people want to be an atheist, be an atheist. If you want to be Muslim, be Muslim. But let me say this, though. The Bible does teach neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given among he under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. And so the Bible does say that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So our salvation is based off whether we believe on Jesus Christ or not. That's all it's based on. Okay. If people want to reach you, do you have a website or an email that can maybe ask you questions so you can help them out with answers? Yep, absolutely. The website is faithfulwordbaptist.org. Um, you know, they can just Google Faithful Word Baptist Church. Uh, faithfulwordbaptist.org that's probably the best place okay perfect uh, Mike any other question before we let him go um, just are you still being harassed by the Homeland Security uh, in any way not anymore the IRS like kept on auditing me over and over again they're auditing me for the exact year that I that I stood up against the Border Patrol <laughs> they audit my business they pretty much put me out of business Wow. And, uh, you know, they've, they've harassed me every way possible, but actually it's been pretty quiet here for a while, so okay. <laughs> things are going good. Let's pray, stay quiet. At least the pastor, and yourself. <laughs> thank you very much, and I would love to have you again. Maybe next time it would be nice, you know, maybe I can find a couple of uh, gay listeners, maybe we can exchange some ideas. Would you like that? <laughs> Eh? What do you think? Uh, hey, I, any opportunity to preach the Word of God, I'll do hey, it, man. Listen, I'm here. I'm just trying to bring uh, b different voices, and uh, I think we yep. are still a civil society, and we have a First Amendment, and I think in a civil way, in, in, without, you know, with violence, we can express our opinion, and I love to do it on the air so everybody can make up their minds. Okay? Yeah, you're right. Thank you Absolutely. very much, Pastor. Please don't forget to go to watch the documentary that we were talking about, and say again the name of the documentary. You did several documentaries. Uh, yeah, after after the tribulation is the one about the rapture, and then New World Order Bible versions talks about where they're changing the Bible to promote the New World Order. Mm -hmm. So that's another good one. Thank you, Pastor. Talk to you later. Stay there. Yep, bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, Mike. That was interesting. That was a good interview. A good interview. Come on, let's go with the sponsor before we close. Okay, Colorado River Vapor. You hear it every week here in Fort Mojave, 4400 Highway 95 and 1931 Highway 95 in Bullhead City. They have hundreds of flavors of juices. If you want to kick the habit of smoke, trash to ash, go see uh, Tom or Karen at one of their locations. Perfect. So listen, guys. I really appreciate uh, you listening. I more appreciate uh, the sponsor, but this is important. We still have freedom of speech, and we need to use it. Okay? Sometimes we don't agree on everything, but that's the beautiful part. You know, we can bring our own ideas and uh, try to unite as a human beings, as an Americans, because regardless different minor differences, 
we are all in danger to become slaves. We are already pretty much there. So I say, please, let's be nice to each other. Let's try to help each other. And even our difference of opinion, we please stick together as a free humanity against the new world order. See you later next Sunday.